I wanted to share about how we can enjoy God as the fountains of living water using an example that was given by one of the speaking brothers. So imagine yourself as a tree planted by a river. And although our leaves may be rich and plentiful, if our roots aren't just as plentiful, if not more plentiful, then when a storm comes, it will be easily knocked over. Um, but a tree with strong roots will stay grounded in the earth regardless of the weather or uh, the seasons. This is a representation of us. We are the tree grounded in the Lord. Um, in this way, our relationship with God will be anchored in deep if we continue to develop our roots and grow as many roots as possible. Did you know that tree roots also grow small root hairs? These hairs are responsible for absorbing the nutrients from the earth. Amen. And this represents our individual time with God. Those precious moments that we spend in prayer or reading his word, this will um, absorb the spiritual nutrients that we so desperately need. Amen. And these roots also need to be repeatedly regrown. Um, this really encouraged me to spend individual time with the Lord because although it is very important to spend time with the saints and uplift one another, it is just as important to remember to care for our personal relationship with God. Amen. And just as a tree needs constant care to ensure its roots are healthy, we too need to continuously nurture our connection with God. Amen. Uh, thus, let us spend time to strengthen our roots to ground us in the Lord. Amen. Uh, I will leave you all with a verse, Jeremiah 17, 8. And he will be like a tree transplanted beside water, which sends out its roots by a stream and will not be afraid when heat comes. For its leaves remain flourishing, and it will not be anxious in the year of drought, and will not cease to bear fruit. Amen. Let us all be like this uh, tree that's planted next to the stream. Amen. Hello, uh, my name is David. I'm in grade 12. And the point I'll be sharing is from message 1, which is uh, the goal of God's calling of the children of Israel was that they would enter the promised land to enjoy its riches. So the first point is that 10 of the 12 men whom Moses sent out to spy out the land, good land, were on the evil port that caused the children of Israel to murmur and rebel against the word of the Lord. This just means that every obstacle or struggle in our life, that we should always uh, obey, and with our whole being is to, uh, sorry, and with our whole being is to trust in the Lord. And because of that, only Caleb and Joshua, the first generation, reached the goal of entering into the good land. Amen. That means that we New Testament believers need to pursue the goal of being in Christ and view the all seemingly unserveable obstacles. Amen. Or we can signify as the giants in the story as our bread of or nourishment and vitality. Amen. And also the last point, it talked about three main points. If we're going to fully possess Christ as a good land, we must first be aware of having an evil uh, heart of disbelief. Not to believe is to rebel against the Lord. And be aware of murmurs, uh, complaints, and enders. And then the last point, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13, exercise the spirit of faith and keep our heart turned to the Lord to believe wholeheartedly in his promises. Amen. 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 Hello, my name is Rina and I'm in grade seven. I'm going to share from message, from message one of the Junior High Star. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God breathed and profitable for teaching, for conviction, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I really enjoyed the first part of that verse, All scripture is God breathed. If you want to feel God's presence and hear his speaking, you can go to the Bible. It's all because all scripture is God breathed. His breathing is his speaking and presence. So in the scriptures is where you'll feel his breathing and presence and hear his speaking. When my brother was explaining this message, he gave an example. Taking a brother, he stood a good distance away from my brother and breathed and asked my brother, can you feel my breath? He said no. Finally, he got close to the brother, breathing against his neck, and asked, do you feel my breath? The brother said yes. When we go to, the, when we go to his word, we can feel the closeness of his breath and his presence. Praise the Lord, we can go to the Bible and eat of his word, and that by eating and drinking and enjoying his word, we can enjoy his presence. Amen. Amen. Hello, Saints. My name is Joshua. I'm grade 9. Last week, I learned that we can feel God's presence when we read his word. The Bible isn't written by one person, but many different people. Even though it might seem like it was all written by just one person, 
It's because they're always sharing God's word. Yeah. Jeremiah 15, 16 said, when your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. This yeah. verse talks about how wonderful God's words are, sweeter and honey. But how do we understand God's word? It's simple, by prayer reading. Prayer reading isn't just repeating words. It's talking to God, uh, God as we read through his words. It helps us connect with God and understand his word better. Let's try praying as we read through the Bible so we can truly <coughs> enjoy and learn from the, God's words. As Him 24 said, to turn this age, he needs the young people. Yet, as more young people fall under Satan's influence, it's up to us, the overcomers, to, resi to resist Satan's temptation to claim victory over him. Amen. Today, it, together, we can build our spiritual Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. she had, he asked her what she had tasted. She said something along the lines of, I taste chocolate, marshmallow, cookie, and matcha. The point of this example was about experiencing Christ or being touched by Christ. Amen. My mother only saw the cookie. He didn't taste it. But the sister did, and she described how it tasted. Amen. So, in relation to Christ, the brother experienced Christ secondhandedly. He heard the sister describing it, and he said, wow, that's amazing. But he didn't actually experience it himself. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Your words are found and I am found, and your word becomes to me the gladness and joy of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Jehovah of hosts. Amen. Um, we need to experience his word as the gladness and, um, as gladness and joy of our heart. Amen. Amen. Amen.